Good morning. My name is Brandon McIntosh, and I'm one of your assistant administrators at Centennial High School. Hi, everyone. My name is Miss Lee. I'm one of the assistant administrators here at Centennial, and I am over TAG testing an IB. Starting Monday, tardies will count. So it will be important for you to get to class on time. So as soon as you get here, quickly grab your breakfast and get the class to your first period class and every single class after that. All right, we do have a new tardy policy. So your teachers will be uh, implementing those in your classes. If you get too many tardies, they will be having one-on-one -on -one discussions with you about that and also possibly making calls to your parents. If you get too many tardies, you will be seeing one of us, either Miss Lee or myself. I will be seeing 9th and 10th graders, and Ms. Lee will be working with 11th and 12th. Okay, and now we're going to talk about the cell phone policy. As you guys can see in the hallways, there are three zones. You have the red zone, the yellow zone, and the green zone. And in your teacher's classrooms, they will identify whether you are in a red zone where there are no cell phones to be used, a yellow zone where it's instructional purposes only, or a green zone where you're allowed to use your cell phone at teacher's discretion. Remember that those cell phone policies need to be enacted. You need to follow those policies as your teacher directs you. Again, if you have too many um, instances where your teacher has to uh, fix your behavior, you will be written up and you'll be seeing one of us for cell phone infractions. And that's it. That's it, we're good. I think so. Everyone, I'm Miss Leggett. I'm the PBIS coach along with Miss Schwarzenfeld. We are here to tell you that you can earn points by showing respect, integrity, and community to attend events that we're going to advertise throughout the school year. And you can also cash in those points at your teacher's store. Good luck and be kind. Show respect, integrity, and community. A late April evening, Christine and Jim McHenry cheer on their son's lacrosse team as they move closer to the state championship. The Centennial Knights are strong this year, with ambitions of going all the way. For the McHenrys, the season is not what they expected. Jamie McHenry's number eight jersey sits on the sideline. He was a fabulous son. I was proud to be his father. Um, uh, he was always a, a great kid to have around. Spring break, my seventh grade year, we I took him to Miami, and we started there. We got down to Miami. We were loving it. We were like having having fun, just looking at all the Miami girls and everything. Jamie's parents were in North Carolina, over 700 miles away. That's when we got the phone call that no parent ever wants to get the most horrible phone call. When we get to the road. I cross, and then I remember I turned back and I said, "Hurry up." And then I turned back around and I started walking and all I heard was a bang. Jamie was hit by a car and killed on April 3rd, 2013. Uh, I know a lot of people probably couldn't point to the single worst moment of their life, but I certainly can. In the days and weeks after, the McHenry's struggled to understand. One of the biggest problems is that you you want to you want them to go on you want to keep caring for them and and, and having them in your life I just felt like you know we can do this we just have to get through these hard times and by forming the um, the Jamie McHenry Foundation I feel like that's kind of our way of continuing to take care of him in the looming shadow of tragedy, the McHenrys found a way to honor Jamie by giving back to the community and the sport he loved so passionately. I remember Jamie always being as a person who was a lover of all sports, but lacrosse was something that kind of drew him, drew his interest in such a way that was like unparalleled to any other sport. Lacrosse was just his passion. He, he loved it and uh, loved watching it, loved playing it, and uh, he was pretty good at it. Um, had a great shot, quick, and uh, it was a big part of his life, and ours after that. After his accident, we started thinking of ways to give back. Through the Jamie McHenry Foundation, the family embarked on many projects, such as funding a new lacrosse bounce back wall, new gates at the fortress, and scholarships for lacrosse athletes in high school and middle school. 
their most prominent fundraiser is a 5K race in Jamie's honor. We have it at Centennial High School. It goes right through the parking lot of the, his elementary school, Hillside Elementary. And what better name for the race than Jamie's lacrosse nickname? Rocket Shot was Jamie's nickname in lacrosse, and he was given that uh, by his teammates and by his coaches based on the velocity of a shot on goal. He had this wicked kind of wind up where he, you know, and people would duck. <laughs> The McHenrys have sponsored this event every year since the accident, and it continues to bring the community together. Two thousand eighteen would have been Jamie's senior season. You know, we have a really good chance of making it deep, and you know, everything we're giving, like on and off the field, is definitely for Jamie, without a doubt. And he's with us one hundred percent. Jamie still inspires and motivates the Knights lacrosse teams with state championship aspirations. I went number eight because Jamie was also number eight, and I owe like everything I know about lacrosse to him. We, now in high school, we're like doing really well, so. Um, I think it gives me and all my teammates something to work for and play for him. So. In a time of tragedy, it is important to remember who they really were. It was crazy. Jamie was nuts. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't care, but he didn't care in a good way. You know, he didn't care what people thought. But he was. Like, he was such a nice and genuine person. Charisma is something that really helped him, um, especially when pursuing his love for sports and he wasn't afraid to make new friends. Like, he was open to everybody. And by choosing to live for them every day through our actions. I kind of feel like we have to, you know, we have to live for Jamie and that's where that whole concept of the live for Jamie um, that the kids came up with with their wristbands and the support of the community has been just, it's for me, it's very healing and helpful. Live for Jamie. Thank you, Max. We started the live for Jamie shortly after he passed. All of his friends came up with the live for Jamie concept. And it's just kind of keeping his memory alive by giving back to the community. And this is our primary fundraiser and it's a happy community event. And uh, Jamie would be so proud to see everybody out here. The McHenry Foundation is awesome for basketball. They support us. They give scholarships to um, you know a male and a female player in both uh, our Junior Knights program and our varsity program, um, you know, which is awesome for our kids. Um, so you know, I've come out to support them because they support us, and they're just a great family and great people. Um, today we ran the Rocket Shot 5K, which is um, in memory of Jamie McHenry, and we all just came out to support. Um, the foundation. It helps bring everyone together um, and raise money for a good cause and it really unites um, not only people for Centennial but just people all around the community. I feel like it just brings the community together each year at the beginning of the school year. You get to come out, you get to run with like your friends, your coaches, teachers, um, and it's just fun to see everyone together. I love that we have different lacrosse teams here represented. We have different, you know, the Centennial Athletics, we have the softball team cross country, I think we have a couple of cheerleaders, so it's just, it's a nice kind of restart to the school year. 